So my first question for the panelists are, how can schools prepare students for the reality of having a successful career in the games industry? Uh, well, uh, I guess for schools to have a, a good video game program, obviously they have to make video games. Uh, one of the best uh, things that I learned while going to school with Digipen was how to fail. And I know that sounds really kind of depressing, but it's really actually good to make as many games as you possibly can and fail because you'll learn a whole lot more from your failures than from your successes. For instance, uh, time management uh, is a really big deal. Uh, feature creep, it's something you know that you'll encounter when you get into the game industry, but if you do it while you're in a safe environment like school, um, that's just all these lessons that you'll learn before you your job is on the line. I'm glad to hear you say that uh, you know you fail at Digipen because yeah. I'm starting to feel guilty about that, especially since Digipen always wins every uh, GF. Um, you but should have seen like our, our sophomore game; it was not pretty. <laughs> So, uh, in, in my opinion, it's also about teaching the collaboration aspect of it and uh, just getting them right to work, uh, not bogging them down more with theory, but just here, here's a team of people that get along and just get right to making games. That's what you should be doing anyway if you've been that passionate about it now, even before you get to school. But uh, that's what my experience was at Flashpoint. They put us together and threw us to the wolves, like, here's, here's a class, go make a game and fail at it, <laughs> mostly. But uh, it was really interesting just to learn the process that way. I'm very glad to hear your collaboration with Dr. Josh. That's also my first I was telling you that you were going to do it. The next time I'm going to tell you the very first thing is learn how to learn. That's the most important thing. Critical thinking, problem solving. Those are things that you learn in university. You don't teach anything else like that. You know how to work, and you know how to work with other people. We have a little different philosophy. We believe that game development is a graduate level program. We think that people should go out and get a broad based undergraduate degree, um, whether it be computer science, um, art creation, studio art, sculpting. Um, our designers come from we have a soprano from Rice to a, a uh, financial manager from Penn. So we, we, we think that before you're ready for professional game development, you need to have a story to tell. And that undergraduate experience is the best place to go and learn your stories. And you know, at the end of the day, game development or video games are a way to tell a story and a way to express that story. And if you start too young, they don't think you're ready to tell your story yet, unless you have some really unique talent. So we, we, we suggest go out and get a good undergraduate or good associate's degree in something and then, and then start working. Great insight and feedback. How do you guys feel game programs can help students gain the experience before they interview for positions? I know Kim gave some good insight into team collaboration and projects, but are there any other things that you can think of that would be um, recommendations from you as panelists? Uh, well, I mean, hello. Hey. Uh, the the more uh, items you have on your resume, uh, the better off you are. Uh, whether that be like small projects you do on your own, something that you've done in school. Um, a mod. Um, I know Valve's hiring philosophy is we hire from the mod community all the time. Uh, quite a few of our developers, uh, Brian Walker, for instance, you know, and uh, the more uh, you know, the more that you can prove that you have experience uh, when you go into an interview, the better off you are. For us, it was also for us, it was also a matter of. Uh, that they taught us the marketing and PR aspects of things as well. And being able to leverage uh, your local papers and uh, just get out there and understand how to get people interested in your game helps you also talk about it. So uh, we learned pretty much immediately that entering competitions and uh, being vocal about what you were doing and sharing the knowledge that you're acquiring, uh, even if you're developing a small font tool, share it and get it out there so that people understand who you are and, more names that know you, the easier it is to you know, pat up that resume. I'm an academic, so I'm going to pull a um, part of that. Um, it's important to have foundations nailed down. Your mathematics, your physics, um, if you're going to be a programmer, uh, algorithms, efficiency, uh, how to optimize. These are things that uh, um, higher managers in developer groups always look at. 
I was on a program like this in, in, uh, in North Carolina, and there was somebody who stood up from the floor and said, you know, I don't know how to program, and I'm not an artist, and I'm not a designer, but I have great ideas. I have these great ideas for a game. And is there a place for, you know, can I get a job in the game industry? And everybody on the panel was trying to think of a politically correct thing to say. And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said, usually the ideas that I hear, it's called Sims, go buy it and figure out how to do another thing of it. You know, the biggest thing that I think we see is commitment. You know, this is a tough, tough business. And you have to be committed to something. You know, a mod group. I mean, work on a mod for a year. You know, do something make some commitment. Our students make a two-year commitment. It is a tough, tough program. And what our program does is help them learn a lot of things, but it's like a gatekeeper. And our folks get to see a lot of people because they made that two-year commitment. But once they get there, the first thing they ask them in an interview is not what you did in school. What did you do outside of school? You know, what kind of things have you thought of? And it's getting tougher and tougher and tougher to get in this industry. So the biggest thing that if you want to do this, it's a big, big commitment, and you gotta wanna make that commitment. And if you're not willing to make the commitment, you know, you're not gonna make it. That's a good, that's a good point in terms of going outside, because uh, Justin Moore and I, uh, the founders of Metamorphosis, we did uh, our game outside when, uh, during the summer, we could have just been chilling out and relaxing, uh, even after like the crunch of the first year, but we went out and just started making uh, a game for Microsoft Dream Girl Play, I mean, we didn't, win, but we tried really hard to win, and we tried to just make that fun game. Uh, it was definitely outside, so it's very close. Another recommendation that I have is identifying somebody who can be a mentor, someone who's in the industry, that can give you advice and coaching, and can give you critical feedback. I guess 